Welcome to my channel. In this video, we will discuss about high blood pressure or hypertension and all the effective strategies, including dietary and lifestyle changes and antihypertensive medications needed to keep your blood pressure on track. But before we begin, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any of our informative videos. So let's dive right in. The World Health Organization estimates that globally, over 1.2 billion people ages 30 to 79 have hypertension. Hypertension often has no symptoms and is considered as a silent killer. It is the major risk factor for various cardiovascular complications, such as heart attack and stroke. First, let's discuss briefly what is blood pressure. Blood pressure is the pressure of the circulating blood against the wall of our arteries. It is expressed as systolic pressure and diastolic pressure. Systolic pressure is the upper reading and it is pressure on the arteries when our heart is contracting during systole. And diastolic pressure is the pressure on arteries when our heart is relaxing during diastole between the heartbeats. Both pressures are measured in millimeter of mercury. Ideal blood pressure is considered to be between 90 by 60 millimeter of mercury and 120 by 80 millimeter of mercury. Definition of hypertension varies slightly depending on the geographical region. According to European guidelines, Blood pressure above 140 by 90 millimeter of mercury is considered as high blood pressure. Whereas according to American guidelines, blood pressure above 130 by 80 is considered high. Now let's discuss all the effective ways to lower blood pressure. It can be mainly divided into dietary changes, lifestyle modification, and antihypertensive medications. Target blood pressure for the people below. 65 years of age is below 130 by 80 millimeter of mercury and for those above 65 years is below 140 by 80 millimeter of mercury. Let's discuss all the dietary changes that can help to lower blood pressure. Follow a heart-healthy diet. The National Institutes of Health recommend the DASH eating plan, dietary approaches to stop hypertension, as a heart-healthy option. The DASH diet emphasizes on eating fruits, vegetables, and whole grains, consuming low or zero fat dairy products, eating fish, poultry, beans, nuts, limiting processed foods, red meat, and foods that are high in saturated fats and added sugars. Cut down on salt. Ideally, limit your sodium intake to no more than 1,500 milligrams per day. Reading food labels, limiting processed and fast foods, and using herbs or spices to add flavor to food instead of salt can be helpful. Get enough potassium. Try to consume 3,500 to 5,000 milligrams per day, ideally through the foods you eat rather than supplements. Some foods high in potassium include bananas, avocados, and potatoes, with skin. Some people with medical issues like kidney disease or who take certain medicines may have to be careful with potassium. So check with your doctor before including potassium-rich diet. Lifestyle changes include Aim for a healthy weight and watch your waistline. Losing weight is one of the most effective lifestyle changes for controlling blood pressure. If you are overweight or have obesity, Losing even a small amount of weight can help reduce blood pressure. Try to maintain BMI near 25. Too much bulk around your midsection can affect your BP. For women, a waist of more than 35 inches, and for men, more than 40 inches is high. Increase your physical activity. For those who have hypertension, regular physical activity can bring blood pressure down to safer levels. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC, recommend doing at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise per week, or around 30 minutes a day, five days a week. Try including aerobic exercises such as walking, jogging, cycling, swimming, or dancing. Quit smoking. Smoking not only increases blood pressure, but also increases risk of heart diseases and stroke. The chemicals in tobacco smoke, including nicotine and carbon monoxide, damage the inner lining of blood vessels, losing their ability to relax and expand properly making it harder for blood to flow. Stopping smoking helps lower blood pressure. It can also reduce the risk of heart disease and improve overall health, possibly leading to a longer life. Limit alcohol. Limiting alcohol to less than one drink a day for women or two drinks a day for men can help lower blood pressure by about 4 mmHg. One drink equals 12 ounces of beer, 5 ounces of wine, or 1.5 ounces of 80 proof liquor. Get enough good quality sleep, the recommended amount for adults is 7 to 9 hours of sleep per day. Develop healthy sleep habits by going to sleep and getting up at regular times. Following a calming bedtime routine, 
and keeping your bedroom cool and dark. Avoid large meals close to bedtime. Limit or avoid nicotine, caffeine, and alcohol close to bedtime as well. Manage stress. Learning stress management and coping with problems can improve your mental and physical health. Learning relaxation techniques like meditation, yoga, or deep breathing, talking to a counselor, and finding a support group can all help. Regularly check blood pressure. High blood pressure often doesn't have symptoms, so measuring your BP is the best way to tell if diet, exercise, and other lifestyle changes are working. You can check it with a home monitor, or you can visit your doctor. If you are liking the video, please hit the like button, so YouTube can spread this video to others as well, and comment to share your experiences as well. Now let's talk about the medical treatment. Sometimes, lifestyle changes alone may not be enough to manage high blood pressure. That's when your healthcare provider may recommend medications. When prescribing medicines, your provider also considers their effect on other conditions you have, such as heart disease or kidney disease. Several types of medicine can be used to help control high blood pressure. For people under 55 years or having type 2 diabetes, they are usually offered angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors or an angiotensin-2 receptor blocker as first-line treatment. For people aged 55 years or above and belonging to African or Caribbean origin, are usually offered calcium channel blockers as first-line agent. Angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors reduce blood pressure by relaxing your blood vessels. Common examples are enalapril, lisinopril, perindopril, and ramipril. The most common side effect is a persistent dry cough. Other possible side effects include headaches, dizziness, and a rash. Angiotensin II receptor blockers work in a similar way to ACE inhibitors. They're often recommended if angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors cause troublesome side effects. Common examples are Losartan, Valsartan. Possible side effects include dizziness, headaches, and cold or flu-like symptoms. Calcium channel blockers prevent calcium from entering the muscle cells of your heart and blood vessels. This allows blood vessels to relax. Common examples are amlodipine, felodipine, nifedipine. Possible side effects include headaches and constipation. Diuretics remove extra water and sodium from your body, reducing the amount of fluid in your blood. The main diuretic for high blood pressure treatment is thiazide. Diuretics are often used with other high blood pressure medicines or when there are signs of heart failure. Common examples are indapamide and bendroflume thiazide. Possible side effects include dizziness on standing up, increased thirst, needing to go to the toilet frequently. Beta blockers. Beta blockers can reduce blood pressure by making your heart beat more slowly and with less force. Beta blockers are typically used only as a backup option or in patients with angina. Common examples are atenolol and bisoprolol. Possible side effects include dizziness, headaches, tiredness, and cold hands and feet. Always consult with a healthcare professional for personalized guidance and treatment plan. It's crucial to take your medications exactly as prescribed and attend regular checkups with your healthcare provider to monitor your progress. If you found this information helpful, please give us a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more health and wellness content. If you have any questions or would like to share your experiences, please leave a comment below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.